Hey, it's Darren, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about setting up the Wi-Fi Pineapple in Linux. I know I just talked about that in a previous video on the uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple connection script in Kali Linux 2.0. I just posted it to the forums, and it was soon after that that I received some feedback that made me kind of think about this. If you're new to the Wi-Fi Pineapple, uh, especially on Linux, the WP scripts have always been, since the Mark IV era, a very convenient way to set up internet connection sharing. And basically what it does is it's a nice little front end that will configure IP tables for you and set up that forwarding so that your Wi-Fi Pineapple can share that same internet connection that, say, your laptop has, uh, whatever method that may be. And then any of the clients that connect to your Wi-Fi Pineapple will then get internet access through your machine, which is really convenient because you can run a ton of tools in Linux, obviously, um, networking-wise. So soon after posting this video here to the forums, received some feedback. Thank you, Hammer Man, uh, Hammerhead and everybody else for pointing some of this out because it was by looking at these screenshots that I noticed a few things that were like, oh, Wow, okay, so I'm going to take another approach to this connection script, add some more robust error handling, and make it a little bit more intuitive. So it's through this that I've gone ahead and set up an auto detect function because, you know, some of the, like in this screenshot in particular, typing in F1, it's actually supposed to, you know, display a list of possible connections and uh, the, the answers need to be, uh, you know, a multiple choice. So uh, went ahead and made a little update to that. So. If you haven't already, in fact, I'll just go to, uh, I'll make a new directory here, and w get the latest. So grab the latest version of WP6. I think this is uh, version 6.3, so uh, wifi pineapple.com slash wp6.sh, and then you know make that executable. And then uh, you can go ahead and run that as root. And the first thing that's going to happen when you run this is it's going to notice that this is the first time you've run this and that it, we're going to go ahead and recommend that you uh, do the auto detection because in most circumstances it's going to be correct, uh, as well as keeping those IP defaults. Uh, you would know if you needed to change your advanced IP settings because you would have done that manually on your pineapple, um, as well as saving these settings for next time so that the next time you run this script, you literally just have to press enter and Bob's your uncle. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through that now. Uh, in this case, same kind of mechanics that you find with most other Linux programs, uh, the capitalized letter is what will be the default if you just press enter. So you can you can press Y, you can type yes, you can type yes, however you want, or just press enter. So what's gonna happen here is it automatically detects that we have, in my case, a Wi-Fi pineapple at F17. Now it does this in one of two methods. Uh, the first method that it tries to do is using IP, which is part of IP route two. So you can learn more about that from the Linux Foundation, but it's kind of the um, successor to IF config and if it's not on your system it's okay what it'll do is it'll prompt you and say hey you don't have IP uh, installed but we can go ahead and do this using if config and netstat uh, so there's still a method to do it that way it's not as accurate potentially I, uh, I haven't tested with every possible scenario, but um, it, in at least my testing here, it has been very accurate in finding these things. So I really recommend everybody use the auto detect. Uh, so we find through um, through IP that we have here a, a Ethernet interface 17. So what's going to happen? The reason mine's 17 is because I've done a lot of testing on uh, Wi-Fi pineapples and other you know, USB Ethernet devices. So every time I plug in a USB Ethernet device into my system, it registers as a new one. Uh, and so that's why I'm all the way up to 17 on this. But uh, suffice it to say, what we're going to do is look for a uh, USB Ethernet adapter using that same OUI or the first three octets of the MAC address that is specific to, uh, in this case, the Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano. And once we've found that, um, we're going to go ahead and we also, you know, make sure that it's an actual Ethernet interface and not confuse it with any potential wireless interfaces. And it does that by looking if it begins with ETH. In most cases, in the I guess it's now considered the old school way of, uh, you know, your 
ETH0, your ETH1s of the world, uh, just like you have your WLAN0 and your WLAN1s. Uh, if you're using the newer system, which if you're on, say, Ubuntu 15.10, you may have noticed if you run like if config, uh, wow, those network names are really large. They start with, or at least the Ethernet ones start with EN, and they're like, I forget how many characters, but it's a little bit ridiculous. It's kind of like the equivalent between an IP4 address and an IP6 address, and man, is that not going to be fun to have to speak over the phone in the NATO phonetic alphabet. Regardless, it finds uh, the Wi-Fi Pineapple on your computer, and then it will also go ahead and detect the interface that you're getting your internet through. In my case, it's just over my ethernet, as well as its default gateway, and that's using IP. Uh, so if those are to your liking, if you look at those and hey, that's correct, then all you have to do is press enter and use those uh, auto detect settings. And then uh, at that point, you're prompted if you do want to set up your advanced IP settings. Again, the only reason you would do this is if you have manually edited your, edited your slash Etsy slash config slash network file on your Wi-Fi Pineapple to move it away from the default 172.16.42 network. Um, and if that's the case, that'll walk you through setting up the script to do that as well. Uh, but then again, at that same token, if you are doing that kind of level of you know advanced tinkering, you probably also know how to set up uh, IP tables. So you know more power to you. I'm just going to say go ahead and keep these default settings. It will make your life easier. Press enter, uh, and then we'll be asked if we want to save these settings for the next time we run this script, which is great because we don't have to. It actually saves it back to the script. We don't actually have like a a dot pineapple or something in your home directory configuration file, uh, it actually just uses said to save itself, which is pretty cool, makes this app uh, pretty portable. And then you can just go ahead and hit enter for that. And then once and then lastly, okay, so we've saved our changes, do you want to actually make the connection now? So I'll go ahead and say yes. And I'll show you the difference. Now when I run this again, all I have to do, it has all of those settings from last time, I just go ahead and press enter and Bob's my uncle. So anyway, I thought I'd just make a short video about this because I did notice you know, some concerns on the forums and I really want to thank you all for providing uh, you know, this detailed feedback. It was really awesome to see you know, how you guys are using this and it's because of this feedback that we're always making the product better. So uh, thanks for that and for everybody else uh, you know, that's newcomers to the project, I really encourage you to join us on the forums as well as uh, irc.hack5.org. We're in pound pineapple and pound hack5 good fun. Um, so that's, that's my video for the day and I will see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.